So in this episode of Book of the Beast, I'm going to be going over the last unit in the Codex, the Stompa. Lord of War, and I'm sure it's in here because they have a model for it. 770 points base, and it is just incredible. I've played some games with one now, and it's a lot of fun to play one of these guys. And if your opponent doesn't have anything that can really hurt, handle the stampa it's just going to walk all over them it can be a lot of not fun for your opponent if they don't if they're not ready for it um and um uh, if they're not ready it's gonna be a lot of fun for you because you just this thing can literally walk over an army all by itself if they don't really have anything to stop it so let's go about it it's uh weapon skill four of course ballistic skill two strength 10 base uh, front armor 13, side 13, rear 12, so it's going to get really nice armor on it. I wish it was 14 in the front, but I'm not going to complain. Initiative 1, 4 base attacks, that's really awesome, and 12 hit points, or hull points. Hull points, hit points, I guess it's really the same thing in this game. Uh, vehicle, super heavy walker, transport, uh, and it has a transport capacity of 20 models. Uh, which is awesome. And of course it's super heavy so you can put multiple units in it. So as I said, I've been running uh, a big mech for the KFF and a unit of Burna Boys, three of them, five Burna Boys, three of them converted to mechs. So that gives you four repair rolls at the beginning of every shooting phase. And um, and a unit of Gross. You can put boys in there or Mega Knobs or whatever else you want to put in there with it. Um, but Gratz is really, 11 Gratz and the six other models um, really make a good combination for the inside of the of the Stompa. So War Gear, let's see what all the guns it has. Three big shooters. It's got two big shooters in the front and one out the back. It's got the Def Cannon, which is a 72-inch range, strength 10, AP1, 7-inch blast. The Scorcher, it's got a single heavy flamer, for some reason. It's got... The Super Gatla, which is absolutely freaking awesome. It's 2d6, strength 7, AP3. Um, can fire three times a turn. And any time after you roll doubles after the first time, after that shot is resolved and it runs out of ammo and can't shoot again for the rest of the game. So it's very similar to the way it was before, um, but just doesn't fire continuously until it runs out of ammo. It can fire three times per turn. It's still, if you don't roll those doubles, the Super Gatla is way amazing. Um, so of the three times I played the Stompa, one time it ran 21 shots without rolling doubles, and the next two times it ran out in turn one and turn two. So it's okay. It's really random, but and it's really orky. It comes with three super rockets. Again, super rockets are really awesome. They're infinite range, single shot, strength eight, AP three, large blast. It comes with three of those, so those are really awesome. I love those. Um, really great for. They're just really utilitarian comes with a twin link big shooter which is right here on the arm and it comes with the mega chopper which of course is a strength d ap1 close combat weapon effigy all unit friendly units of, with the orc faction that are within six inches of a stomp i have fearless so this includes grots and this is a really awesome ability uh, especially if you have something that's falling back they'll automatically get rally within tw if you get the stomp within six so that is a really freaking awesome ability um it has one access point at the rear, so it's not an assault vehicle, so you can't assault out of it. Well, it only has two options. It may take two additional super rockets for 20 points each. I like that option. I really like the super rockets. And it may take rot riggers for 30 points. Which again gives it, it will not die. Which is definitely not a bad thing to have. What exactly does it will not die do? At the end of your turns, roll a d6 for each of your models with this special rule that has less than a starting number of hull points. Wounds are hull points, but has not been removed as a casualty. On a 5+, plus, that model re regains a wound, a hull point, or lost earlier in the game. So it's just basically exactly the same as a mech uh, for 30 points. Uh, but then it's at the end of your turn as opposed to the beginning of your shooting phase, which means it's after the combat phase. So the combination of mechs to repair and grot riggers gives you a repair on both sides of your assault phase. Uh, which isn't, which is really awesome. But Grot Riggers are very expensive at 30 points. And uh, so fully loaded out with the Grot Riggers and the two additional Super Rockets, you're looking at 840 points. So if you're running like an 1850 list or a 2000 list, this is going to be, this is going to be your army, basically. There's nothing wrong with that. This is an army in and of itself. It's this giant monstrosity of 12 hull points with a 5-up invul saving and shooting got the D weapon in close combat, which means if it hits anything, it's just going to go away. 
it's a super heavy walker so it gets stomps it's got that transport capacity it's, so you can have all those repairs and you dump those grots out at a, on an objective late in the game if you have it still um, it's just really really spendy as points wise and the model of course itself model itself of course is just really just freaky awesome um, uh, yeah, I just love this model and I love everything about it now that I actually got to play it I've had the model for so long I finally got to play it and it's just so much fun and you know you've got this big giant thing you put on the table your opponent's going to focus on it of course they can focus on it because you're not going to have much else around it because you're going to have because uh, this is going to be most you know more than you know probably around half of your points it's worth it though it's totally worth it 12 whole points it just takes so long to get through um and especially if you're repairing two or three of them a turn uh, it's just going to get into comp it's it's going to survive its march across the day and of course it's being super heavy walker it can it moves 12 inches and you can run it if you want to but it's got so much shooting uh you will probably never run it yeah so you can shoot your weapons at different things so you shoot at things with the big shooters that take it shoot at big things with the super rockets and you can assault afterwards what's really cool is that you get the warlord trait which one is it the like a thunderbolt warlord and all friendly units with the orc faction within 12 inches of him can reroll dice from did you want to run moves or charge range get that warlord trait you can reroll your charge with a stompa that's insane um, so anyway, I can't say enough things about this, the Stompa. It's a great model. It's great in game. It's got so much shooting. If your Super Gatler doesn't run out, it's just going to tear through everything. Um, even without that, I mean, you still got all those big shooter shots. And those can really plink away at smaller units uh, without having to worry about charging them or going after them. And um, it does have fire points. That's right. So if you do put burners in here, you can actually flame out of the fire points in addition to the Scorcher that's on the... I actually did that once too. Um, it's flamed up a bunch of guardsmen with the the burners inside. Um, so again, it's a pretty expensive model, but it's it's only like ten dollars more than the or Gorkonaut kit uh, for a lot more plastic. The points are just really crazy though, with a maximum of eight hundred thirty points plus whatever you put in it. So you know it's not too hard to get a thousand. 1200 points just in this one model here in the middle of the table uh, by the time you get done adding stuff to it but super heavy walkers have this great and stomps and the d weapon and close combat attacks and the strength 10 shooting attack um it's just an absolutely awesome model to play with again if you as long as you're playing somewhere that allows you to play with it uh, because not everyone will and i said if they don't really have anything that can handle it it's just it's gonna walk over them. It's just gonna kill vehicles. It's gonna assault a vehicle and destroy it, no matter what it is. It's just gonna shoot the crap out of everything. Um, there's just so much shooting on it, even without the Super Gatla. I can't complain about the shooting. Uh, so if you're gonna play a Stompa, uh, make sure your opponent knows you're gonna play a Stompa. Um, don't give it plenty of boys so they sit around it so they can't drop a, you know, the the five melt a gun. Uh, stern guards because the melting gun could technically do could five melting guns could conceivably destroy it in a single turn actually all you need is four four penetrating hits could hypothetically um four penetrating explode results could hypothetically kill this in a single turn the odds of that are not very high though but that's what it would take because even if it if it's anything other than an explode result even a penetrating hits only one whole point um, so they have to get uh, an explode result to get the D3 plus 1 whole points off it. Um, which melt guns could conceivably do. So I've got it down. Try it out. It's a lot of fun. Stomp is a really, really fun model to build. Really fun model to play with. It's just a lot of work to paint because it's a lot of surface area. But besides that, Stompas are awesome. And the fact that they're in the regular codex is even more awesome. So you don't have to buy any expensive Forge World books to play it anymore. Uh, it, and anywhere that allows Lords of War should allow a Stompa. Because it is really expensive. So uh, that's a really nice benefit. And I think it's, I think it's well-priced for the amount of damage it can do and the amount of damage it can absorb. So, 
no complaints about the stomp, but give it a try uh, as long as your friends don't mind it. And thanks for watching.